Kinko's was an American retail chain that provided copying, printing, marketing, office services, and shipping that opened in 1970 and changed its name in 2004. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of my latest videos. Please hit that like button and leave a suggestion or a comment. You might see that in a future video. Thanks for watching and now back to our regular scheduled program. And this is Richie. Very cute. Our vacation last summer. Memories that you share. My husband. Mm-hmm. Are memories that last the longest. Bring your favorite color snapshots to Kinko's and we'll turn them into a full Aww. color calendar. How sweet. A perfect gift for the people you want to share your memories with. It's so pretty. Just make sure they're everyone's favorite memories. Oh my. In 1970, Paul Orfalia launched Kinko's with a $5,000 bank loan. The University of California at Santa Barbara graduate opened his first copy shop in Isla Vista, California and christened it Kinko's, the nickname he was given because of his curly reddish hair. The first store which he leased shared a space in a building that housed a hamburger stand. Orfalia's 100 square foot establishment contained a rented Xerox copier, an offset press, and some stationery and school supplies. Once the store's clientele grew, the copier was rolled out onto the sidewalk and used as a self-service machine. To finance new locations, Orfalia took on fellow students who scouted the West Coast in search of colleges with more than 20,000 students. Once they found the colleges, the scouts set up shop close to the campuses. To save money, the student scouts slept in fraternity houses. Orfalia stuffed flyers in mailboxes and delivered orders, and spent the rest of his days working with fellow hippies he had hired to operate his company's machinery. In 1985, the company opened its first 24-hour store in Chicago. Kinko's grew rapidly, and by 1990 there were 480 Kinko's locations. Around 1989, the company began moving away from serving college students and began targeting small business owners. Kinko's operated 635 stores by 1993, 780 in 1995, and more than 850 by 1997. As Kinko sought to expand the range of services it offered, it entered into joint ventures and strategic alliances with other companies. It teamed up with GT&E to link its stores to the World Wide Web through high-speed ISDN connections and with Netscape's communications web browser for its growing fleet of rentable personal computers. When it decided to offer video conferencing at selected locations, Kinko's teamed up with a long-distance carrier, Sprint. In 1997, the company obtained much-needed financing from its expansion strategy when the private investment firm of Clayton, Dublier, and Rice purchased a 30% interest in the company for $214 million. The investment was expected to help finance Kinko's international expansion and its ongoing penetration of the U.S. market. Investment proceeds were also expected to be used to finance communication and computing technologies. Orfala left the company in 2000 following a dispute with the investment firm. Orfalo wrote in his autobiography that disentangling him from Kinko's took enormous effort from the lawyers at Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher. The problem was that rather than adopt the traditional franchising model by which the promoter creates a corporation that sells franchises, he had built the company as a series of loosely connected personal partnerships between each store owner and himself. By 1997, he had established over 127 Kinko's partnerships. All had to be carefully dismantled and rolled into a single S corporation to convert the company to a more centralized corporate-owned business model. 
Orfala and several other key partners believe so, doing so would decrease the time Orfala spent mediating disputes between different factions of Kinko's partnerships and enable the oldest partners to cash out smoothly and transition to a new generation of managers. However, the new structure also made it easier for CDR to gradually force him out of his own company. In February of 2004, FedEx bought Kinko's for $2.4 billion, which then became known as FedEx Kinko's Office and Print Centers. Prior to the FedEx acquisition, most Kinko stores were open 24 hours a day. After the acquisition, FedEx reduced the hours for many locations. On June 2, 2008, FedEx announced that they were rebranding FedEx Kinko's as FedEx Office, the retail branch of the FedEx Corporation. As of early 2010, some stores and branding still showed FedEx Kinko signage. To ease customer confusion during this transition period, many stores displayed a large purple sign sign in the window that said Kinko's Printing Inside. So what are your favorite memories of Kinko's? Leave a comment below. For me, it was during my college days in the 1990s doing the midnight run to Kinko's to copy my friend's textbooks so that I could save money by not having to buy the book. At its height of popularity between the late 1980s and mid-1990s, Kinko's outlets and urban centers across North America were catch basins for writers, artists, anarchists, punks, insomniacs, graduate students, DIY bookmakers, obsessive compulsive hobbyists, scam artists, people living on the street, and people just living on the edge. Whether you were promoting a new band or publishing a pamphlet, on DIY gynecology, or making a fake ID for an underage friend, Kinko's was the place to be. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C Productions.